All right, so welcome back to the lab. We're gonna start off um, kind of where we left off. We have our clean workbench, and I have moved over my supplies for the next protocol. So what we're gonna do now is protocol 6.2, and it's serial dilutions. So what I have on the board might look um, a little intimidating, but it's really not. So first, let's see, I have my supplies out, my lab coat is on, I have closed two shoes, my hair is pulled back, and I have gloves on. So with that being said, for serial dilutions, we're going to take our initial uh, microfuse tube, which is full of our sample, and we're going to take 10 microliters of our sample and move it into the next tube that has 90 mil microliters of phage buffer. So what we're doing essentially is every time we are moving 10 microliters over, we're dividing our concentration by 10. So where you might have started off with 1 million um, PFU is a plaque forming unit. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot that for a second myself. So plaque forming units are what we're going to call the bacteriophage um, that actually produce a mark on the plate, which is what we'll be looking for. So 1 million plaque forming units, which could be in the initial tube, divided by 10 would be 100,000. Divided again, which would be the 10 to the second dilution, would be 10,000. Divided again for 10 to the minus third would be 1,000 plaque forming units. 10 to the minus fourth would be 100, which is getting to be more of a countable number. 10 to the minus fifth, which would be 10. And 10 to the minus sixth, which if you started out with 1 million plaque forming units would be 1. Now, we do six dilutions, usually minimum, because this one million number in your original sample could be 800 million, it could be one trillion, we don't really know, so we want to dilute it down and then plate it out so we can actually see how much we actually have in our sample. Um, let's see, so we have six tubes we'll be starting with, seven counting the original sample, and each 6.2 gets the same 90 microliters of phage buffer. And how we equal the, the actual 100 microliters total would be moving the 10 over each time. So we're reducing our concentration, dividing it by 10, but keeping the volumes the same. Um, so let's actually go ahead and do it. So with our micropipetters, just like we kept the table aseptic and clean, we're going to wipe these down. It's just to keep the contamination low. We don't want to have anything on here that we don't need to uh, contaminate our sample. We're going to remember that even though I'm talking right now, while you're doing this especially, you don't want to be talking. You don't want to be polluting the, your zone of silence with bacteria or debris, whatever else that might be kicked along in the, in the breeze, I don't know. Um, so we have our phage buffer, which will already be aliquoted out for you. We have our bacteria, and I have my six tubes out. Now, what's important with the tubes is to label them. Once you start going, if you didn't label, you're not gonna know what you have. And you're gonna have to start over from the beginning, and it's, it could be time consuming, it could just be frustrating, you know. I've forgotten to label before, and let me tell you, I won't do that again. So I have, I'm going to label my tubes, um, which I, I've already done. Uh, 10 to the minus 1, 10 to the minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5, minus 6. And I'm going to have six plates out for my dilutions, since I'm doing six dilutions. And I'm going to label each of my plates. And I'm going to label with my initials, with today's date and with what dilution is it. So I have 10 to the minus 1 with my name and the date. I have 10 to the minus 2, 10 to the minus 3, minus 4, 5, and 6. It's really important to make sure you label everything first because 
especially being at a table with um, other students or just having you know craziness going on you ask a question someone starts talking to you you forget what you're doing where you are um, it's gonna having sixth place just in general on your table can be confusing so just making sure all your ducks are in a row before you actually get going will save you a lot of time in the end um, so I have everything labeled I have everything out I have everything clean and I have my micro pipettes cleaned off and so let's get going so first I'm going to check my my uh, micro pipette make sure it's on the right settings I have done that before actually um, talking not paying attention not keeping a septic didn't change my micro pipette settings and I actually wasted a whole bunch of um, chemicals that we needed for a different experiment so that um, was really embarrassing and also careless so something is just taking two seconds to look double check you have everything labeled you have everything clean you're doing a good job it's just important to check the micro pipette settings also so first I'm going to have my phage buffer and I'm going to fill each of my containers with 90 microliters of phage buffer It's important to change tips. You want to keep everything um, sterile and you want to keep everything just free from contamination. So remember, even though I'm talking right now, you won't. It'll take a while to get the feel of using the micro pipetter. I totally was not good at doing this for quite a while. And it's really just all about repetition. Everything, you know, with everything practice makes perfect. And I'm surely not perfect, but eventually maybe I will be, <laughs> just like you guys. Um, so, now that everything has 90 microliters of phage buffer, I'm going to take my 10 microliters of my sample and I'm going to put that into the first dilution. I've checked this, made sure it's on 10, and I'm going to go into here. And you can see, um, if only my camera could magically zoom in, you'd be able to see that 10 microliters is really small. Um, once you squeeze it out, it may even only look like a little drop, less than a teardrop. I think three microliters is a teardrop. So imagine 10, you almost have nothing. And then one of these containers actually holds a mill milliliter, so that's a thousand microliters. Ten microliters is really small. So I'm going to take my tube that I just put ten microliters into of my sample that has 90 microliters of phage buffer in it already. Just give it a little shake because I want to get the, everything dispersed. And I'm going to take 10 microliters of this from 10 to the minus 1 and move it into Okay, so next, it seems repetitious, but it is repetitious. I'm going to be moving 10 microliters of my 10 to the minus 2nd sample into 10 to the minus 3rd. I'm going to give it a little shake to disperse what I put in there. Move from 10 to the minus third 
into 10 to the minus fourth, dividing it again by 10. Give it a little shake. Take 10 to the minus fourth into 10 to the minus fifth. And finally, fifth into the minus sixth, which will be the smallest of the dilutants. Um, okay. So now that I have these, I'm going to want to see what could grow on them. So I want to actually plate my uh, dilutions that I've done. 